<laughs> Hi everybody. So I'm just talking on my iPhone. This video will probably get two views because it's just me talking about how I'm a loser with no friends. <laughs> So let's start at the beginning where trauma always starts, childhood. <laughs> I don't know, I just do a lot of self-reflection on my birthday and I had two days where I just couldn't stop crying for some reason, but I've had the best, I've been in the best mood ever for a birthday. I'm 28, she's pushing 30. <laughs> I just finished my birthday photo shoot, so that's why I look like this. I don't know. I feel like what made me so emotional the other day, oh my god, my, how did my pedicure chip already, well it's not gel, so I don't do gel pedicures. Anyway, I think I was crying so much the other day because I have literally never been this mentally stable in my entire life. I used to be so weird and manic as a child and just, I don't know, I got bullied for it too. That combined with me not being allowed out of the house really. <laughs> not that I was a recluse or anything, but I definitely kept myself entertained. I'd memorize movies and <laughs> I'd read books, magazine. I, basically, I would just keep myself occupied. I think that has a lot to do with my relationships now. I feel like those years where you develop those core relationships with friends, I was sitting in my room, cutting out magazines, making vision boards, and keeping myself company, which I love myself. I love spending all of my time with myself, and I don't mind being a loser. I've been a weirdo, I've been a loser, I've been everything my whole life. That's mainly because I've dealt with mental health issues and I haven't, I didn't know that that's what that was. I just always knew that something was wrong and I was just so different from everyone else. When I was, I don't know, at my 25th birthday, I had like started medication and I thought, I thought like we were on the up and up, you know? I was like, ooh, finally. But it was a misdiagnosis. Don't even get me started on freaking therapists and psychiatrists that don't believe you. A mental health issue will show up differently in men, women, black people, Asian people. It presents itself differently. But I know in the black community, it's very much like, oh no, that's just so-and-so. They just, you know, can't stop talking. They're ta they talk a lot, they talk fast. And we just sort of brush it off as something else, but no, like go to a doctor. <laughs> and also, if someone in your family has mental health issues, you're more likely, more than likely to have that. And surprise to me, I was diagnosed multiple times. <laughs> I used to feel ashamed and I didn't want to go to the doctor because I was afraid of what it might be. As I started hearing about other people and how people talked about other people, it just scared me. And then I also had a really crazy incident in college that just, I didn't go to the doctor for like five years because of it. Yeah, I just, and like there was a point where I was just so deeply depressed that I couldn't even, could I couldn't even. I had a cat. I had to return the cat after three or four months because I was so mentally unhealthy at that point in time. I'm in a relationship and that would be probably, I don't know, the healthiest long-term relationship that I've been able to... Actually, that's a lie. I had a best friend and I've known them for very, very, a very long time. I think five or six years. So I'd say that's my most successful relationship however i don't know things change i'm in a relationship i don't live near them anymore I can't just come over at any time it's not that easy and yeah i don't know just things change i feel like we've been drifting it's been hard on me i feel like losing friends not even losing friends but just moving into a new space without a friend that you that used to be in your space all the time is very hard but outside of that romantic relationships i've never been able to sustain them ever and I also think it's really funny how all the things that I deal with mentally, if I didn't look the way that I did, people would treat me even worse. And I don't know, just the stuff that people... Anyway, I'm neurodivergent as hell is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm a 
neurodivergent bitch. <laughs> And I do feel like that stopped me from making friends. I have been trying though at 28, my, my big age of 28, I've been trying. I made a new friend, sort of. I made like a gaming friend. She introduced me to Cozy Grove and I've been playing it nonstop. It's been, I, I've, I played, I think within my first five days of the game, I played 30 hours or something. That's how much I'm obsessed with it. Also, do we see rose gold with, with this purple? It's so pretty. Why is it so pretty? I don't understand. I feel like I like who I'm becoming. I don't mind spending all my time by myself. It's just those moments that I do want to have someone around, non-romantic relationship with someone. And it's hard. It's hard. What else? What else, what else, what else? I feel like, I, I don't know. I'm one of those people that's also not, I don't wanna say that I'm not close with my family, but I and so many other black people, black women, and just like friends that I just have had in general are basically taught to be hyper independent and it's just crazy. Oh my God, it's storming. Okay, it was supposed to storm on my birthday, but it's been clear skies all day. And now I hear the thunder and I see the lightning. <laughs> anyway, you raise someone to be hyper independent. And then once they're old enough and hyper independent, now you want, you know, it's just, that's not how I roll. And also due to my mental health, I'm not going to save what I have because it's like not anyone's business. Just know I'm neurodivergent. Okay. Just know that. Just know that. Medicated. <laughs> it's very much out of sight, out of mind for me. And it's not that I don't love my family. It's not that I don't like them even. It's just, I am so occupied up here. I don't have space to think about 20 people every day, every week, every month. I, do, I just do not have the mental capacity to do that. I pretty much lose my phone every day because that's how much I'm not on it. I literally set alerts, silence any group chats because that drives me crazy, the constant pinging. I literally will have a breakdown. <laughs> It's not them, it's me. <laughs> well, for the most part. For the most part, it's not them, it's me. I've also really struggled with gaining weight, actually. I have always been fit. I did gymnastics as a kid, volleyball, track. My body has always been fit. I've never been outside of that. And interestingly, it used to be so bad that I really wouldn't care what I was doing or eating. And then all of a sudden, someone shows interest in me and I'm working out every day hard. Looking back at the stuff that I did, I think 2020 was a very pivotal point for me and I got to slow down and realize that life was different than that and that I did have a really unhealthy relationship with my body. I feel like I'm slowly finding a balance now. I'm keeping my body moving, but I don't feel pressure. I also feel like when I was growing up, there was a lot of pressure around body image and it caused a lot of body dysmorphia. Even as an adult, I feel weird as I am. And I have to every day just remind myself that your body changes at every stage of your life. Who I was five years ago and the body that suited that person was completely different. Me at my fittest was my most depressed. My most depressed. If I'm stressed, I'm working out like a madman. If I'm not stressed, I feel like I'm at like a midpoint, right? And then if I'm super depressed, that's probably the largest I've been. Really why I have no friends and I'm alone. Alone, I don't, this is so dramatic, it's so dramatic. I'm not alone. Part of me doesn't have any interest in making new relationships or friends. Part of me just wants people to understand that I have, it's not that I don't like you. It's not that I don't wanna be around you. It's just constant communication every day. I can't handle that. I'm also grown. <laughs> Hit me up when there's stuff to do and I'll be there for you. That's, I will make time for you. But pretty much all the other time I spend with myself. And it's really funny because my boyfriend the other day said that he really, my, one, of the, one of his favorite things about me is my independence. As in, I don't care what other people do. I know myself so well that I make decisions I like, I like check in with myself before I make decisions. And I'd say I do really like that about myself as well. I think I'm learning to 
let people help me. I'm learning to just be happy. One of my therapists said this. I mean, one of them, like I had an old one and then whatever. One of my therapists said this and I can never get it out of my head. So I was talking about how I have self doubt or I'm, I get really hard on myself. And I was like, there's just this voice in my head that tells me that I'm really bad at something or I'm a terrible person or I don't deserve this. And she, after all of that, she was like, that, that voice in your head is so-and-so. And so reflect who's the person that has said those things about you before likely childhood when did you start believing that because it's not true i am capable of relationships i do deserve love i have so much more growing to do i used to feel i was so behind because i was undiagnosed i was so behind because everyone else got to experience all these things when i didn't or whatever and Yes, it would have been so nice to be diagnosed as a kid. It would be so nice to not have had to worry about that in my adult life at all and to be able to make rational decisions and choose better things than I chose for myself. I feel like my life in college especially was a reflection of how I felt about myself and just not having the proper medical care for what I needed and not knowing what was going on inside my brain and also feeling ashamed because what I would do, I'd be super hyperactive. I Whenever I go out, I'm like very hyperactive. I'm like, hi, hey, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. But once that subsides, I'm literally just chilling. And it's because when I was going through everything I was going through, I would be so ashamed that I wasn't happy or I wasn't the person that people met me as that I would just basically kill that friendship by never going out again. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Not kill the friendship, but I'd be scared for that person to see that I'm not that happy all the time, actually. It would scare me because the version of me that people meet, I really, I really wish that I could just be that person all the time, but I also am an introvert. I'm a super crazy introvert. My boyfriend, super nerdy, like nerdy, nerdy nerd. And he's like, you're more introverted than me. That's crazy. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I didn't realize until I started dating another introvert, just how introverted I really am. And I work from home and I, so I don't see anyone ever, literally ever, unless I make an effort to go outside of my house. Also my makeup looks so good. It's matching my body so well. All that to say, I'm a loser with no friends. I'm working on it, but I also don't, I don't care. I also don't give a shit. Okay, I'm trying not to cuss, but I feel like that was warranted. Genuinely happy, as happy as I've been, I think ever in my entire life. This is probably, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna leave a record, 28, happiest I've ever been in my entire life with little to no friends and the sweetest ever boyfriend who loves me for me, loves my like crazy wild. I literally today, I was so happy today that I did a whole In the Heights musical in front of him. He was just on his phone and he'd look up and he'd like interact and it was really cute and it was really fun. And okay, not that I didn't have that growing up, but I always felt like I was annoying someone. Everyone always looked, felt, told me that they were annoyed by me versus cultivating my weirdness, you know? Also, oh, I should mention here, I am not having kids. I made the decision at, was it 24 or 25 to get rid of those tubular devices down there. And I've never been happier. It was right before Roe v. Wade was overturned. After, after I did it, I felt all of the release or relief I felt so, like all the weight somehow, not all of it, but a lot of it came off my shoulders. And cause I was just, I knew that I didn't want to have children. I feel like we're so brainwashed. It's crazy. You have a 12 year old saying that they want to 
have a kid and I don't really give a fuck about people or what they think about that decision because it makes me happy and it relieved stress and it just makes life easier to live. <laughs> and it's interesting because people would be like, did this or this? How, how did that not, didn't, wouldn't that influence your decision? Why would you do that? Yes, every single decision that I have ever made ever has led to this point. <laughs> Yes. So not one thing has, you know, made me think this way. It's just as I grew up, I went to college, I learned things, I got to know myself even better, and I realized that's not what I want. I honestly thought I would cry talking about some of this. I also want to end with, I miss my uncle very much. Okay, this might make me cry. <laughs> uh, I was like getting into a groove, groove on YouTube starting 2020, and I stopped out of nowhere. And it was because my uncle, I was super close to him, literally, I don't want to say raised me, <laughs> but he, he raised the weirdness in me and my siblings. Like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, I have to take this makeup off anyway because I have to go to bed because it's 4 a.m. Um, oh my God. I stopped because my uncle passed away and he just always believed in me so much and one of the things he was watching all my videos before he passed and I don't know I felt like I had to keep going because he just supported me so much and I feel like he would have wanted me to keep going oh my god it's okay I have to take all this off also this dress is from house of CB <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to reduce him to his diagnosis. He was just so much more than that. I don't know how much of this I'm going to put in because it's very emotional for me, as you can see. So when I was at my lowest, I definitely thought of him. And I, I thought about how hard I took that news and I was... And it really lit a fire under me to get my mental health together. It got, it just, it got really bad in the end. And no one, no one had told us this was going on with him. Although I have childhood memories of seeing this. I saw stuff, but I didn't really know what was going on and no one explained it. And I have old videos because I used to have cam my camera in everyone's face all the time. I know why we weren't told, but as adults, I just feel I don't know. I feel like I could have had more time. And right before he passed, it's so crazy. I saw him, I think it was Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving. And there was something telling me that we should stay and spend more time there and keep talking. But I didn't have a car. And so I left. And then the next thing I hear, He's gone. This person who literally cultivated my weirdness is gone. And that's one of the things I love about myself is how freaking weird I am. I don't know. I would consider him a best friend. <laughs> so much changed after 2020. So much changed with my family, with my friends. I'm sure that happened to a lot of people. Yeah, slowing down really makes you confront yourself. Anyway, it's been 30 minutes. Really, my time is up. I'm 28. Oh my God, it's so crazy. I'm so happy though. I'm so, so, so happy. I just have so much to be thankful for. I have my mental health. I have someone who literally loves everything about me, which is crazy to me. Cause I, sometimes I just be snappy and he is the most patient person in the world. Thank you, whoever. <laughs> I need a patient person. My relationship with my sister has gotten really strong as well. That makes me really happy. Yeah, my relationship with my sister improved during 2020 and we got a lot closer. Oh my gosh, and I've just traveled so much. I just choose one or two things that you wanna spend your money on and just save for that. Traveling is that thing for me. I went to Paris, I went to Montreal, with my sister and I'll, I'll just announce here 
I am going to Ireland next. <laughs> so I'll be seeing you guys in Ireland, not this year, but next year. So I'm so excited for that. Well, yeah, first couple trip as well. My boyfriend's going, so I love you guys. Thanks for listening to me rant. Yeah, pushing 30. <laughs> I feel like I still look 20 something. Is that just me? Is that just me? Is that just me? Bye. -bye. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> 28 year old Juliana signing out. Thanks for listening to my birthday talk. <laughs> See you guys.